Welcome to Sage Audio. Today we're creating a rock mastering chain. But first, if you have a mix that you need to have mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Subtractive EQ on master. For this master and for rock tracks in general, I want to get it to a loud final sound without overemphasizing the distortion on the track. To start, I'll use a mid-side EQ to first attenuate low frequencies from the side image, causing the mid-image's kick and bass to stay focused. Then, I'll dip a little around 200 Hz on the mid-image to reduce masking to the vocal. On the side image, I'll boost the same range to increase the warmth of the guitars and the instrumentation before dipping roughly 2 kHz on the side to carve out some room for the mid-image vocal. Now, since this effect is going to be subtle, let's take a listen to a full before and after. I'll use peak normalization to make their loudness more comparable, but keep in mind I couldn't match their LUFS without causing the original mix to clip. What's this? I got something in my brain to sense. Is everything I have to say either pay or sell out to get your check? Reducing resonances on side. Although this mix sounds great, there are some aggressive resonances on the side image due to the heavily distorted guitars. I want to remove some of these, so I'll use this Soothe 2 plugin and set the processing to the side image before isolating it to the right range. Now notice that I set the quality to higher settings to reduce phase cancellation and other unwanted artifacts. Let's take a listen and notice how the sides sound a little more balanced. What's this? I got something in my brain to sense. Is everything I have to say? I If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free, and it helps us bring you more videos. Mild compression on mid. Next, I wanted to make the kick stick out and have more power. Now, to do this, I used this Weiss compressor and isolated the compression to the mid image and the lowest frequency range. With a low ratio and a carefully set threshold, I only needed to attenuate by about 0.5 dB. Then, I used the auto makeup gain setting to amplify what was being attenuated. Let's take a listen and notice that although it's subtle, the kick has a lot more impact. What's this? I got something in my brain to sense. Is everything I have to say either pay or sell out to get your check? Amplifying transients and tone. Up next, I'm going to use a split EQ by Eventide and affect my tone and transients separately. For the transients, I amplified the lows and the highs, as well as subtly amplified the full transient band at the output. I dipped a little of 250 Hz and boosted the vocal range with the tone side. As a result, the lows and the highs are punchier, while the vocal comes through better. Let's take a listen to it. What's this? I got something in my brain to sense. Is everything I have to say either pay or sell out to get your check? Simultaneous compression and expansion. After the split EQ, I'll introduce this Omnipressor by Eventide to cause both compression and expansion. I started with a mastering preset and adjusted as needed. I set the amplification and attenuation ranges to 1.5 dB and set a slightly quicker release time of 80 milliseconds to work quickly but avoid distortion. By compressing when the signal is over the threshold and expanding when it's under, we control dynamics from both the peaks down and from the noise floor up. Let's take a listen and notice how these two processing types control dynamics, but also create a more powerful sounding mix. What's this? I got something in my brain to sense. Is everything I have to say either pay or sell out to get your check? 3D effect with saturation. With very subtle saturation, combined with frequency-specific mid-side panning and input-output panning, we can create a lot of depth in an otherwise flat mix. The process to create this is complex, so I just start with this 3D preset before adjusting to make the effect more suitable for mastering. Now notice that the drive amounts, the mid-side panning, and input and output levels and panning are all triggered by envelope followers being triggered by transients. So let's take a listen and notice how flat the mix sounds when the processor is disabled. Sell out to get your check. 
side transient bus. For the bus, I'm going to create a parallel auxiliary track and first use the plugin MSED to mute the mid image, in turn, isolating the side image. Then I'll insert this transient shaper to expand my side image's transients, resulting in a more detailed and dynamic stereo image. With the track's channel fader, I can blend in how much of the effect that I want, depending on how wide I want the master and how punchy I want the side image. Let's take a listen to it. If you're enjoying the channel, use the search box to watch more of our videos. Subtle Golf Oz EQ Moving on to the master output, I like to use this Golf Oz EQ to subtly amplify and attenuate incoming frequencies for the sake of reducing masking and making the master louder and clearer as a result. I'll isolate the processing to the low mids and to the highs and brighten slightly. Let's take a listen and notice that although the changes are small, this processor has a big impact on the clarity of the mix. Two, limiting stages. When limiting, I like to use two separate processors in series to keep one from working too hard. First, I'll use this Oxford limiter and use the enhance function, set to about 30%, to bring up quieter details. Now notice that I only have less than one dB of attenuation on the pre-process side. Then, I use this L2 limiter, set to its dynamic algorithm, to increase transient impact, but again, I needed very little attenuation from the peaks down. Let's take a listen to how these two limiters in series can make the mix a lot louder without the need for aggressive peak reduction. Mild hard clipping. Last up, I want to make the master a little louder, but more importantly, I want to hard clip the transients. This will add a small amount of white noise whenever the transients cross the threshold. These added high frequencies will actually make the transients stick out, making it sound slightly brighter and more dynamic. The final master was negative 8 LUFS, but feel free to make the master quieter if you want something more dynamic. Let's take one final listen to the full before and after. If you have a mix that you need to have mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.